This moment will always be glorified in India's history that how a country which transported its first rocket launch pad in cycle and a bullock cart, referring to it on 28th September 2014, the New York Times published a cartoon where it showed an Indian farmer with a cow is trying to enter the elite space club. They mocked and criticized Indians for doing this and stated how these poor Indians are initiating space programs with such a low budget. But later, they did apologize for this and also recently, before the launch of Chandrayaan-3 on July 4, 2023, the New York Times published an article that they appreciated Indian space programs. From being mocked by elite space club till being appreciated, India has gone a long way. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Chandrayaan-3 and most importantly, about the growing interest of the world in lunar missions. Do watch this video till the end to understand Chandrayaan and the lunar economy. Now let us understand the history of Chandrayaan project. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee announced the Chandrayaan project on course in his Independence Day speech on 15th August 2003. Then on 28th October 2008, ISRO launched its first lunar mission, Chandrayaan-1. This mission was a major success. It was during this mission that the presence of water molecules was discovered on the surface of the moon. After this, on 18th September 2008, the first Manmohan Singh cabinet approved the Chandrayaan-2 mission. India partnered with Russia's space agency Roscosmos for this mission. ISRO took the prime responsibility for making the orbiter and the rover while Roscosmos was to provide the lander. During that time, Russia was planning its Phobos grant mission to Mars. Now, how was this linked with Chandrayaan-2? It was linked because the technicalities connected with the Phobos grant mission were supposed to be used for making Chandrayaan's lander. However, the Phobos grant mission failed and Russia was unable to provide the lander. Later, India developed its own indigenous lander and named it Vikram as a tribute to Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the eminent Indian physicist and astronomer. Finally, in July 2019, India launched its second lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2. The Chandrayaan-2 consisted of an orbiter, a lander Vikram and a rover Pragyan. We are going to understand these modules in detail a little later in the video. Unfortunately, because of a software glitch, ISRO lost communication with the lander just 2.1 km before the surface of the moon. Thus, it deviated from its intended trajectory and crashed. But this mission was successful in placing the orbiter, which is currently orbiting the moon at an altitude of 100 km from the surface of the moon. The orbiter was manufactured by India's prestigious aerospace and defense company Hindustan Aeronautics Limited or HAL. Just under four years after the launch of Chandrayaan-2, Chandrayaan-3 took off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center on July 14, 2023 at 2.35 pm. The objective this time is to develop and demonstrate new technologies required for interplanetary missions. With its launch, the Indian Space Research Organization is taking off to achieve a successful soft landing on the moon. Now, what is a soft landing? Soft landing a lunar module means going from a screaming speed of 6000 km per hour to zero, which is extremely challenging. And hence, till date, only three countries, that is Russia, US and China, has achieved this. That aims for India to become the fourth country in the world to achieve this glory and the first to do this in the southern pole of the moon. But let us first try to understand why is there so much interest in the moon. The most important reason is the discovery of presence of ice in the moon. After the discovery of the presence of ice in the southern polar region of the moon, the interest in lunar missions has been renewed. Ice means water. Water could be split into hydrogen and oxygen, both of which are rocket fuels. This means in future, rockets could be built on the moon for other space missions and powered by locally produced fuels because of its low gravity. Because of its low gravity, it is easier and cheaper to launch deep space missions from the moon, which would not be economically feasible from the Earth. Second reason for this growing interest is to take the first mover advantage in the lunar economy. Vikram's successful landing will put India into an elite club of countries. Only the US, Russia and China have been able to achieve this feat so far. But even more importantly, it will be India's ticket to the moon economy, an emerging sector with potential of billions of dollars. The lunar economy has two distinct stages. Number one, transportation. 
Number two, commercialization of lunar data. Let us look at each of these individually. Transportation. A report by PwC states that the lunar transportation market, which means the business of moving things from Earth to the Moon, is expected to grow from $9 billion now to $42 billion by 2040. NASA has a program called Artemis, in which they plan to send four astronauts to the Moon by the year 2025 and want to keep sending people there regularly. Similarly, China has also a goal to send their own astronauts to the Moon by the year 2030. Today. When the lunar transportation economy is at its initial stage, the biggest challenge for space companies remains a soft landing. A soft landing during which the spacecraft remains functional post-landing. Numerous startups have already sprung around the lunar transport business. Many companies such as Blue Origin and Elon Musk's SpaceX are already planning to take tourists to the moon. Number 2. Commercialization of Lunar Data This stage covers the commercialization of data gathered during lunar missions. Now, not all countries have the technology to execute such complex missions, which is why they depend on data collected by countries who have carried out successful missions to the moon. This data is sold to various research and development companies. The pictures, videos, audio recording taken during these missions on the moon are sold to the entertainment industry for making movies, TV shows, documentaries, and video games. According to a report by PwC, it's expected that the United States will be a major player in the lunar economy by spending a total of $634 billion, equivalent to 51% of global share, on contracts to send things to the moon between 2020 and 2040. Asian countries like China and Japan are also involved and would contribute 31% of global share, which is about $387 billion in contracts. The European Union and other countries like the UAE, Canada, Russia and India would make up 18% with contracts worth $231 billion. So from this data, you can very well understand the reason for growing interest in the moon. Now let us try to understand how Chandrayaan-3 plans to soft land on the moon. The Chandrayaan-3 mission has two modules. Number one, the propulsion module and number two, the lander rover module. What you see in this image is the launch vehicle Mark 3 or LVM-3 named Fatboy. LVM-3 is the rocket that will take Chandrayaan-3 up. Just over 16 minutes from takeoff, LVM-3 will drop Chandrayaan-3 at an altitude of 170 kilometers. With this, the job of Fatboy is completed. The LVM-3 was developed and launched by ISRO on 5th June 2017 at a cost of $45 billion, equivalent to 2962 crores. It was used for carrying the Chandrayaan-2 and will also be used for carrying Gaganyaan, which will be India's first crewed mission to the moon. Now, this is only the rocket. This rocket will carry the two modules, which is the propulsion module and the lander rover module. Now, let us understand the first module, which is the propulsion module. Propulsion module is the spacecraft or satellite that carries the lander rover module. Its main function is to carry the lander rover module till it reaches and goes 100 kilometers above the lunar surface. Number two is the lander rover module. After reaching the lunar orbit at about 100 kilometers above the lunar surface, the lander rover module will detach itself from the propulsion module and the lander will start descending towards the moon. The lander has engines that will slow down the fall so that it descends gently onto the moon rather than crash landing on it. The rover is a tiny trolley kind of a device with wheels. Once the lander lands on the moon, the rover will slide out of the lander's belly and crawl over the moon's surface. You can think of the propulsion module as a truck and the lander rover module as a cargo. Both the lander and rover have instruments which are called payloads for conducting experiments and analysis of the moon. This image depicts the various payloads that are present in each of these modules. Now for how many days will the lander rover stay alive and will it ever return back to earth? The lander and rover will be alive for 14 earth days. A moon day is about 14 earth days as is a moon night. Since the solar panels that provide electricity to the lander and the rover need sunlight, they will be alive for one moon day, which is 14 Earth days. Once the 14 days are over, the lander rover stops working or sending signals and they remain on the moon forever. 50 years ago, the United States Apollo spacecraft took only four days to reach the moon. But why is Chandrayaan taking more than 40 days to reach the moon? Let us try to understand this. A rocket 
can be shot at a straight line towards the moon but to cover a distance of 384400 kilometers it has to carry enormous amount of fuel and it has to be very big and powerful the saturn 5 rocket that took apollo 11 to the moon in 1969 stood 363 feet tall the lvm3 is just 142 feet tall big rockets are very expensive the chandrayaan 3 is estimated to cost around 615 crores which is much less as compared to the satellites of the elite space clubs so chandrayaan 3 approached a very different and cost effective method compared to united states apollo mission to reach the moon besides there is no need for the chandrayaan 3 to reach the moon fast that is why it takes a route that makes use of the gravity of the earth to sling itself towards the moon the next question is why india selected the southern region of the moon to land till date no country has landed on the southern region of the moon so you must be wondering that in an attempt to be the first country to reach the southern part of the moon india chose this spot to land but no it has a very different reason in some of the parts of the southern region of the moon the sunlight never reaches these areas are known as permanently shadowed region or psr because of the absence of sunlight the temperature in these regions drop below minus 230 degrees such low temperature means that anything that has been trapped there like rocks and soil has been preserved without changing much over time this is like a time capsule that can give us valuable information about the early history of our solar system and the universe so if everything goes as planned the chandrayaan 3's journey is estimated to take approximately 42 days with a landing scheduled for august 23 2023 at the lunar dawn india will become the first country to land on the southern pole of the moon which will boost india's space program and its global standing in the field of space exploration